Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. It's time to put together some of this steel that's in a pile here. We ordered this from a company in Chattanooga who had really good rates on saw cutting and flame cutting. And so it didn't even make sense to try to do it ourselves. And last week's video we made a few cuts, some notches with, uh, with an oxy-fuel torch as well as the plasma torch. Kind of swapped off there and compared the two. And then also, in addition to these notches or copes that... Uh, that, that fit another piece of tubing, I've got to cut a, uh, a little slot in here where a big lifting lug kind of fits in through both sides and gets welded from uh, both sides of the tubing. And I just kind of opted to do that with the oxy-fuel torch uh, just because it seemed like the way to go and it was going pretty well. So I just stuck with it. And you can see what goes in it later on, this big lifting eye. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up on the precision table. This is a Stronghand Tools Build Pro table, and it's pretty awesome. I've got six of these to do, so I could each one use a frame and square and bump them around and get each one square, or I can make a setup one time and uh, get it all square, and then each one will just slide up there and save me a bunch of time. That is the cool thing about a table like this. Big time saver. It's, it's an investment up front, but... It is a huge time saver for short production runs like this. Again, only six of them, but um, it's going to save quite a bit of time. You see the hole pattern here, it's got, a, it's got a hole pattern in it that is automatically straight. So if I put something like this, these stops on there, they all line up and I don't even have to get them square. They already are square. So all I got to do is figure out, you know, exactly where to put them. And I'm going to make some marks with the soapstone here so I don't have to grind all the mill scale off this plate. And I'll grind it where it needs to be welded, and that's about it. And then in addition to where I have it marked there, I've got a few more places to grind it. Not quite done yet, but you get the picture. And really, it's not completely necessary to clean this stuff. I'm going to be using a, a Lincoln Power MIG 350 MP with pulse spray and it, it, it it's hot and it will burn through the light mill scale coating that's on here no problem but trying to put my best foot forward make it look halfway decent so I am doing a little cleaning with a flap disc and see that's that's essentially what we've got there this is the big the main support head of this thing kind of a t-shape with some uh, big stiffeners and uh, and there are also some uh, large attachments that will they'll go on the ends here. We'll show those in just a minute. I'm getting a few tack welds on here, and I'm putting the, the, the things that go on the ends here that, that accept some kind of a swivel bearing in a hole that you can't see right now. And there's a gusset. And we'll put a tack on that, check it really quickly for square. And it's really close. And we'll get several tacks on it. And then these are some little pads that, that there are some like kind of like pillar blocks mount because there's a big Acme thread shaft that goes the length of this thing that runs a little trolley system. And so it's really easy to clamp them down and, and hold them where they need to be because of all the holes in the table. These little one-hand clamps are, are, are very handy. I could set up a, a little tab to hold you know for a place for everything on here but some of the stuff is just easier just to hold down really very quickly and, and get a tack on it rather than have it all fixtured up so let's talk about the the Lincoln power mig for a minute we'll shift gears and talk about some of the settings the first thing is this thing's got uh, lots of different modes so I'm selecting f mode number 14 which is GMAWP which is pulse and I'm using a 9010 argon co2 mix and 377 inches the wire feed is on the left and then the one on the right when you're setting when you're when you're running pulse is a trim setting actually so let me go down the settings here there's a there's also a pre-flow post flow and this is the run in and you don't really need either one for steel I've got the run in off I've got pre and post flow set at like 0.2 seconds there's a start setting also that you can set to run either a hot start or a cold start very helpful on aluminum, not really necessary on steel, so I've got it off. Arc control, when you're running on pulse, kind of controls the rate of the pulse or the pulses per second, and I just mess with that and wound up setting it on seven. Crater fill is another some, something that's very, very helpful on aluminum, but not all that necessary on steel, so I've got it off. And then burn back, I've set it at 0.08 
seconds. That's, that keeps me from having to hardly ever have to snip the wire once I got that, that kind of dialed in. And that's going to be different for every material. And then the spot timer, that's if you're doing a little stitch welding or spot tacks, you, know, you don't want to have that even on if you're, if you're welding or it'll annoy you because it'll cut off after you weld two or three seconds or whatever. So again, I started out at 377 inches a minute. I went on up in the 400s messing around, but 377 was a pretty good place to start. And that's what you see right there. Now I adjusted the trim a little bit, but it's, you got to start somewhere. And I'm not that familiar with pulse MIG on this machine, so I'm, I'm just having to mess with it. I found some pretty good sweet spots here. It's cooking in there. That's a good hot puddle. I think that is close to 400 inches a minute. Now, here is something I found interesting. This is a uh, this is where the tubing rolls over, and I set the trim at first to 1.04, which which makes that arc kind of fan out and wet in. But it was wetting in too good, so it was wasn't driving in down into the bottom of that flare bevel V it was instead wicking over and melting that corner off of the stiffener plate and looked like Fido's butt so that wasn't going to do it so I, I figured I'd mess with the trim I said I, I decreased the trim a little bit to one which is the default setting that's what that's what the machine recommends but and it, it's better you can see automatically it's better it's pushing that uh, wire down in there a little bit further but it's still not quite uh, not quite what I want and I'll show you that in just a second but it's a lot better than the first it's not wicking over and, and melting the corner so bad it's definitely hot enough it's it's burning in and you can see it wetting in melting through stuff and and that's what that looks like so again not that great so I, I adjust the trim actually downward to 0.96 which actually what it does is it drops the voltage a little bit and lets that wire run out there a little bit and so now it's driving down into that bottom of the joint before it completely melts off. Kind of next down the uh, the kind of like next down the arc cone a little bit by running more wire out there or, or you know or some such BS. I don't know. It, it it's it it it's running better. That's for sure. And you'll see it in just a second. Much better. Didn't change anything but the trim. So for this particular joint, that was a really good setting. I've got some of these joints here too where that they're. Uh, where the rolled edge of the tubing makes for a little bit of a gap. And with that gap, if I was at full-on spray transfer, it, it would be kind of hard to, to run this joint. But the pulse MIG kind of buffers it back a little bit and lets you run some, some gaps like that. So it's not quite as hot as full-on spray. Now let's run this uh, big, big lug here. And again, I think we settled back down to 377 inches per minute with the trim set at uh, 1 point, uh, 1.04 or it just it just depends on just depended on the joint trim is set roughly at probably between 1 and 1.04 but did a pretty good job there now for this joint see I've got an edge there as well so I set the trim down into the 0.96 range to keep that edge of the weld from, from running up and, and melting off the corner. So I either want to run all the way to the corner or stay away from it because when it starts when it starts uh, you know coming up there and nipping it occasionally, it just looks like uh, you made a mistake. You know, even I nipped it there right at the end, you can see. So but overall not a bad looking joint. Certainly burn in anyway. Now there's all these uh, big thick plates on the end there really just serve as a counterbalance, kind of a they're just uh, they they really don't, don't serve any other purpose but uh, but for balancing this thing, and I'll try to show those uh, some of the welding those that, uh, that I did on those on another video. But here's basically an overview. There's that big eyelet pad welded from both sides of the tubing, the little you know three eighths inch thick bar stock with the holes in them they get some like pillar block type uh, threaded guides on there and that sheet that 316 sheet was from some steel wheels and a trolley mechanism to roll on and then another little uh, mount plate there with uh, all the pads and gussets and stiffeners on this end so that's really all there is to this thing there's a lot of stuff that's going to bolt on it it's going to look pretty cool when it's done it's heading out the door for deburring and then going to the paint shop and now it came back from the paint shop 
And that brings me to this little tip. A ground, a really good ground, is really important for MIG welding because your wire keeps pumping out no matter what. It doesn't care if you intermittently lose your ground. But I found when I was doing pulse MIG here, it was even worse if I didn't have a good ground. I mean, it really accentuated uh, if, if I clamped on to somewhere where they were just hot rolled and I didn't have it good and clean. But using the, a piece of bare wire, uh, braided stuff like this, like out of an old welding lead, will give you like 100 different contact points and you'll get a better ground. Well, hey, thanks for watching. That's about it for today. We'll see you again next week.